darkness and spell. That's right. I remember that because <laughs> I was like, I don't have this on my thing, but I can bring that in. We removed it from your character. He doesn't have it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Safety precaution. He's in the uh, cage system that's not. Yeah, I can't do that anyways. Uh, All these sealants. Yeah, everything looks perfect, man. Features. Good. Let me look at features. Oh, yeah. And yes, that is up now. Has anyone uh, heard anything from Manny? No. <clears throat> well, you know. Fast asleep. Yeah, he might be asleep. Oh, man. It, it took everything out but Misty Step. When I'm oh, never mind. Sorry. Wrong. Wrong. Get the filters on. There we go. Well, yeah, we might have lost Manny, but... Meow. We'll, uh, we'll start without him. Um, to pass on some, just a conversation that Kyle and Waco and I had before this session began, um, I wanted to do a quick check-in on everyone, how everyone is feeling about the Von Rieg arc so far. Um, I would say that we are probably, probably this session, if not this one, definitely the next, will be kind of the end of Act 1 when it comes to this arc. Um, I anticipate it hap like going on for maybe another three or so more months, three, three and a half months, and then it's probably all going to be wrapped up, um, dense but but short. So as we're finishing up the first third um, this week or next week, I just wanted to get a gauge for how everyone's enjoying it and um, if there's anything that can be uh, made a little bit better. I know for myself just from, from my own perspective. I felt at first that I could have improved the pacing a little bit um, just to keep it kind of feeling like it's moving forward. But I, I think these past couple of sessions, the pacing has actually been quite good. Um, so I think we've done a good job at kind of keeping it uh, feeling like it has momentum instead of kind of stalling around and uh, just kind of, well, it's fun, um, RPing and whatnot, <laughs> making sure that it, it feels like you're, you're accomplishing something each session. I mean, if we're comparing this to the end of the last, like, this is like <laughs> when we first started playing the, like, level of excitement to, like, it's so much better. I mean, it's just night and day. Like, it's, Oh, yeah. That's awesome. So, in terms of me, like, it just feels completely rejuvenated to play the game again. Mostly because the amount of thought that you put into the city itself like it carries a big weight but you know i feel like everybody's enjoying the rp so good i'm glad that's that's exactly exactly what i want to hear and it, it does sound like for y'all's group especially but but honestly for all of my groups <coughs> i've turned this way as, as they've played more that rp just uh it's just more fun um not that combat isn't fun but if you were to take four sessions worth of combat or four sessions worth of RP, um, it seems as though most groups that I have now would rather do the meaningful RP than grinding combat. Jay. Cool. Well, um, that's great to hear. With that said, let's, uh, let's recap over what happened uh, last time. What did y'all do? <laughs> uh, we went to the horse clan and we talked to the horse, horse people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and they said they were easy, right? They were the easy clan. They just They're said like help, help us with help us with the thing, and then we'll help you. I don't, what did right? they ask for? It? Raven yeah, clan that's was easy. Oh. oh, was it Raven? Raven what? clan was just get the book for him. Find oh, the book okay. Yeah, I didn't. 
remember uh, they wanted us to help them renegotiate the terms of their contract with the Kraken oh. and, and the board. Oh. Uh, to get more money for the war services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that your characters at this point would begin to put together, kind of like as you grow up in the where whenever you're growing up, you think that like politicians are like good people that are out there to like help change the world in a positive way. You're kind of learning that a lot of these clan elders are just kind of skeevy people. Um, and looking how to, to advance their clan whenever it comes to this kind of cataclysmic global event. Um, but you're right. The horse clan's offer was help us negotiate a better contract <clears throat> so that we can get some more money. Um, and then we'll, we'll think about throwing our hat in the ring for you. Um, and then also, like you said, the Raven clan um, really wants their book back that was stolen from them. That took up a, a good bulk of the session. What else? Um, what else happened? We went into the Ox Clan house and had like a mm -hmm. bro off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some like real bros. Gym. Some real bros at the bar gym. That's right. <laughs> the bar gym. <laughs> yeah. I like to slam down a pint of meat, a pint of ale while you're working out. Yeah, yeah. You you found yourselves in a half tavern. Yeah half gym as doors were lifting and drinking at the same time Azos got to show off his uh, his strength as he lifted dwarves and beer and workout equipment um, and, and that's really where y'all's session ended was about to meet the young clan Ventus was flying around too yeah it was a, a true spectacle yes <laughs> it was down. it got a uh, it got wild in the ox clan house and I think that your characters would figure that this is not the first time things have gotten like a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy. It's basically like a, a frat house for adult wars. And Derno, what uh, what happened to you last session? Uh, he left him in the morning, got some supplies, kind of traded off some of his gear, you knowing he's going down there. Uh, went to down the Great Lift, spoke to. Uh, Pretty basically a guard who wouldn't let anybody non bore people past uh, the only tunnel that leads out. That's and right. And has and has and they definitely saw Grot and he was definitely trying to go down the tunnel and they kept telling him no and finally he gave up. But they never saw him go back up the lift, so yeah. Ernest probably heading down further. Most likely. Yeah, that's right. Um you were told explicitly that this is boar territory only, and you were told that because of the liability of you moving in that tunnel. Only boars mm. bear that liability. Uh, and so, that of course piqued your interest, as it did Grotz. Um, and further into the tunnel, you desire to go. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants clarified, or... Uh, has any questions about or wants to discuss before we before we hop in? Uh, Jin, Jin tried pickpotting multiple uh, multiple dwarves uh, when all he that shit was going down, uh, yeah. and he did something. And he moves to the bar area for some stealing, more success, small silver key. Yep, I got a silver key. Oh um, hell yeah! And I'm guessing that you straight up pocketed that bad boy. I sure did. Yeah. So yeah, you have a new key. Nice. I wonder where it goes. Yeah, time to figure <laughs> out where that goes. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. If nothing else, then I say we go ahead and get started. Let me get this set up really quickly. And I want to start with Derna this time. Yes. Derna, you find yourself in the tunnel. Well, really not the tunnel. In the kind of large mining chasm in the tunnel. And let me change our music to be a little more atmospheric.
and you find yourself in this very large opening, right? This, uh, hmm. This is much more outside than I was hoping it would be. <laughs> hey. <clears throat> There's ravens and shit. There's birds. <laughs> this is much better. You find yourself in a very long chasm underneath the ground. This is down at the bottom of the Grand Lift, one of the largest in all of the city of Von Rieg. And it leads you to an extraordinarily large mining center that the Boar Clan has begun to mine out from the center from. You can see that for centuries, dwarves have been excavating this vein and you can see that within the vein are all different strains of ores that the boar clan is extracting you can see there is a clump of iron ore over on one side some gold ore on the other it it's a truly a uh, a blessing of mothra to have so many valuable ores in one giant central cavern but leading off from this cavern is a large board tunnel that you attempted to get past. It's currently being blocked by several Boar Clan members who sport the colors of the Boar Clan, as well as the Boar emblem on their jackets, in addition to their mining gear, mining equipment. And they've just turned you away. They were not unpleasant. Um, they were friendly to you, but stern, and that you would not be going past. Uh, yeah, and he definitely walked away, uh, acting with his, still acting like a journalist, kind of looking around and taking notes and stuff, and kind of, in a little place, kind of out of eye shot from them, and, uh, and try, or basically tries to find a place where he can go, uh, to be discreet, uh, and cast invisibility, and he's gonna try to walk out of that son of a bitch, walk right th past him. Sure. Roll for me a stealth check as you look for something to hide behind. What you're able to find are several large stones that you can slip behind. And as you slip behind, I'm going to roll a collective check for just the dwarves here. This is to go invisible, right? This Not is to get, to get hidden behind something, like you described. You wanted yeah, to kind so, of... Okay. Yeah, before I cast it, yeah. Yeah, slip away. And um, several of the dwarves see you go behind the rock as you kind of like walk past it. And I don't know if you would necessarily be trying to like like dance behind the rock, but you nonchalantly kind of stride behind it outside of, of view from the dwarves that are mining. Okay, yeah, I mean, so would he feel, <laughs> uh, I guess there's not really a check there. I guess he would just, he just would. I, 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 he, with the 17, he feels pretty comfortable, I guess. I don't know. Sure. How that work. Uh, he'll, he'll go invisible. He's just going to do it. Okay. Yeah. That's really all he's you, got. Uh, you cast invisibility and you slip out of being unseen. And so these dwarves, some of them notice you like kind of walking behind the rock, but what they don't notice is you walking away as they kind of quizzically look at the rock, but they're not getting paid to look at a rock. So they turn back around and begin to mine. Sweet. Uh, yeah, no, no time to waste. Uh, I'm going to not power walk or anything, but go directly over there, kind of choosing my route to be on the right side to where I think I can get past them the easiest. Sure. And, and being invisible, I mean, you uh, it's quite simple for you to, to walk past undetected. Um, uh, and, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. I was just going to describe it, if you would like to uh, say, yep. like, say something more. Um, yeah. As you walk down the tunnel, you can see that there are several tracks for mine carts. Um, this tunnel has clearly been excavated as it's been bored down deeper in. And as you walk about 100 feet down, it's slowly sloping downwards, and you can feel the air in this, um, in this shaft getting colder as you walk forward. And suddenly it brings you to a drop-off. And as you peer over the edge of this drop-off, 
it descends into darkness. You cannot see. The light does not penetrate down this chasm. But what does is a conveyor lift that you can see ores, um, minerals, gemstones have been put on and are slowly being retracted upwards. Uh, okay. <clears throat> he would kind of sit there and think for a little bit and, um, kind of on his way to, I mean, it's kind of dark. I'm assuming he does have dark vision, but, uh, looking for any of those shroom pieces or ash ashes for sure. Roll a nature check for me. Nature. Normal. As you scan this tunnel, you can see that the actual um, chasm itself is devoid of all life. Um, unsurprisingly, as the Boar Clan has mined it bare. But what you do notice is on the other side of this drop-off, as it goes downwards, against the side that they have not mined out, the natural rock face. And there, you can see with your dark vision, Small fungus growing out from the walls of the rock. Okay. <clears throat> so this is like a place I he can't get to. Like there's a big chasm in between. The right. Two. Yes, yes. Yeah. You would have to go there's across no the chasm. Over. There's no way out to get over there other than... No. Yeah, no, but, no At way. least not the ways that they provide. They provide forward to the chasm and down. Okay. Um, uh, uh, is there a uh, decent, over by where I see the fungus, is there like a decent place to stand or get to if I was over there? Like to be up against it? Against the um, it's sheer? tight. It's pretty sheer. It looks as though like a giant drill went forward, like and went down. So it kind of makes like this big like elbow kind of looking and you're looking and at where that, it goes down and the lift there's no lift that goes down and does that i'm confused about that yeah let me kind of uh let me draw it for you crudely real fast to give you a good idea here so it <laughs> this is gonna be bad and then here's a derna make sure you include it in our handout section <laughs> uh, the scale of this place is much bigger bear in mind but it gives you an idea of what it looks like where am I supposed to see this? Uh, I haven't posted it yet oh uh, okay uh, okay I'm about to post it now It'll be in the Foundry chat. Uh, okay, now I get it. Yes. And so the mushrooms are probably 20 to 30 feet out in front of you against that back wall. But there's a conveyor belt that goes directly downward, leading okay, you yeah. down into the chasm. And and it's being used like the... the because, I mean, he would take it if this is just av available to go down there. Yeah, it seems like it is currently active, right? The belt is currently... Uh, and it's going uh, up? Yes, yes. It's pulling things upwards. And you can see on it is rocks and minerals, uh, other things that are actively being mined. Oh, my God. He's stumped for a minute. He's going to sit there for a minute. <laughs> sure. Let me... Uh, I'll let you think about it as we go to our other... Let's do this. And so for you all, um, you have just been greeted by Undarn in the um, in the tavern, and he's been uh, he's drinking with you a bit. The festivities have happened. Singing is going on. As those well you have lifted um, every dwarf's combined body weight together as you finish your bench presses. But once Undarn arrives, the 
the atmosphere isn't lessened at all. It's not as though these dwarves don't feel like they can have fun anymore. But you're reminded why you're here. As he takes one of a one of the uh, pints of ale and picks it up and kind of gestures to a back hallway. I grab a pint and walk there. Walk. Yeah. Sure. And uh, I'm guessing the the group of you do the same. Yes. Yeah, I kind yeah. of went back in with the group. Perfect. And yeah, he leads you back a couple hallways into a small room. This room has a uh, has a like a keg fixed in it for you all, as well as a large table that has been fashioned from a wagon wheel, a large caravaner's wheel, which makes sense considering they're the ox clan. And you can see that this room has been outfitted as like with like like uh, caravan memorabilia, like maps hanging on the walls that show old caravan routes, a large uh, we- wagon wheel up on the uh, up on the wall. It's kind of like whenever you go to someone's like Western home and it's all taxified. It's kind of like that, but for like like wagoneering, <laughs> and like almost to a point where it's kind of tacky, but it's not quite. It's still kind of cool because it's a lot of like kind of like historical and used things. And he uh, he drops his pint onto the table to make a loud sound and kind of claps and gestures to you, Yokizos, and says, My friend, it's been very good to see you again. I'm glad you're in one piece. It's very good to see you again, too, Undarn. And I give him, like, the hand. Going for, like, the swing my arm out wide hand clasp, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, the big one. And he uh, he meets at full throttle. And whenever you clasp his forearm, you can feel the uh, the strength of this dwarf. Um, he is not a small dwarf by any means. Like I kind of described last time, these dwarves of the Ox Clan are not cut strong. They are world's strongest men strong with large guts, big chests, and uh, they, are, they are thick. And uh, he takes a seat and gestures to the rest of you and says... And you must be the Dryman Dragon. Much about you. I've seen some of you over back in that port town down south. <laughs> I, look, Wait, quick, I look at the party. Quick question. And oh. there is a long silence as he kind of looks between all of you and kind of turns back to you, Yokizos, a little awkwardly and says, So, you, uh... <laughs> How how goes your Von Rieg experience so far? Huh? Uh, the city's been great so far. Um, don't care too much for the politics of all this clan meeting. Oh, yeah. It's exhausting, all of this politics. I, I was talking to one of my clan members the other day. I was telling him, if I could do it all again, I'd be... I, I could not confidently say yes, which I think means probably no. So, where's, uh... Hold on. Give me a second. Oh, God, where's it at? Journal. <laughs> Journal. Von Rieg. And you, you take out your, your uh, notebook and begin flipping through the pages. Where's Svensk? Yeah, that one. And he kind of looks a little sheepish and says, Vince told me this morning that he was not going to be able to come today, apparently, because he's very important meeting. This was a very important meeting. Well, and that's what I... Yeah, I agree. This is a very important meeting. I, uh... And, uh, for all of you... This is a picture of what you would remember of Undarn in his full ox war um, garb as he would have worn into Ocaria. And yeah, he looks a little embarrassed. He says, Oh, this is, I tried to stress them to him that this, this is important to meeting. I, uh, I, he kind of looks down and takes a sip of beer and he says, 
After we finished here, I can tell you probably where you can find him. I mean, uh, Diamond Dragons are feeling a little snubbed here. Yeah, we have other meetings and stuff to attend. It's all scheduled out. This was. Yeah, this is. This. Oh. And he kind of starts cursing out Svensk in Dwarvish under his breath and slams his fist on the table. That I kind of do the same, except, like, no, obviously not as, like, not, like, super strong where I break the table. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and he looks and he says, Yes. Yeah, I know. Very frustrating. I. So well, what where are we can doing we now? find Svensk? He's Spensk. a tournament. Spensk. He's he's where? In Tornant. Where's that? Pulls that map. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Who did he need to meet with that he could not meet with us? Where the fuck is Oh. Tornant. Oh, this, of course, he did not tell me. He kept it quite private. And to be honest with you, I feel a little snubbed myself. Well, is he, is he doing something important over there? Or? He told me it was very important, of the utmost, so... Well, in any case, Undarn, we're here now with you, so let's talk business for a little bit, and then we can... Sure. Go from there. I can let you out here early, and perhaps you can make your way to to try and find him. <laughs> nah. Oh. 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 I mean, we need to talk to him. Well, then I say we go there now. Well, well, if he's going to snub us, he can, he can understand if we go to him last. Like, do we need to see him now? Or can we see him after we see I, everyone else? I, I say we go... Cancel this meeting, go, go to Torden now, find him, and hear out his reason. And if he gives us a good reason, then, you know, maybe it makes sense that he skipped out, if it really is that important. But if not, we move him to the back. Would it not seem a bit threatening to have, like, seven weirdos show up on his at his meeting in Tornan? Yeah, and, and how, how are we going to find him? Well, Tornan's kind of small according to my map. Okay. Not a lot of places okay. to be. I mean, he was the one who accepted this meeting, right? Uh, Undarn did. Well, he technically accepted it, right, Undarn? As part of the yeah, deal? Yeah, you didn't accept it on his behalf without asking him about it, did you? And Undarn kind of looks around the table and says, No, of course not. I... I... I mentioned to him that the group of you would be stopping by tomorrow. And he said, I would love to be there. And I said, well, very good. I will be there. I will be honest. I did not understand quite the seriousness of this meeting. I, And that part is my fault. But, but, and he does raise a hand. I did say that he did say that he would be here. So... All right, well, let's settle then. You'll take us to him in Tornin. Yes, you shall take us there because this is on you. And then kind of slam my hand on the table a little bit harder now. Okay, well, look, I, I suppose this time is already a lot, to, so it's not as though I'm doing anything. I suppose I could take you to Tornin. Uh, I stand up and say, all right, thank you, Indarn, let's go. Post haste. <laughs> yes. Post haste. And uh, he takes his beer and kind of shoves it to the table. And then and... I grab my beer and look him right in the eye, and I sit there and chug all of it, and then I put mine down. And uh, you can feel that that uh, Undarn's feeling a lot of the heat that's being applied to him. As he stands up, and I was more kinda... like beckoning him, like, dude, you can finish your drink, bro. That was more... Oh, 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 I see, I see. Um, and he he picks the flag, the flag, and back up, and begins to walk out with it. And you can hear him kind of muttering again in Dwarvish. 
And whenever the group of you come back out, the party has died down quite a bit. The drinks are still being had, working out is still being done. And he kind of yells loudly to the, to the room and says, I will be escorting the diamond dragons here to Tornin. So, that'll be back. And they all just kind of look at him blankly. And he kind of raises his hand and says, but if there's any reason that you need me to stay for any important business, please <laughs> let me know now because I will not be back for several hours. So, your my clan channel. comes first. Kind of like mid-speech, like I'm like, oh well, I guess nobody. I guess let's go. And as the group you kind of begin to walk, he kind of stutters and is like, I just want, okay, going want, okay. No one needs anything. I will be going <laughs> then. Please send to be a raven if something comes up, and I will be here very quickly. And he walks out with the rest of you, and you can tell. Obviously, that he does not want to come with you. I He's would kind like of... to sit in the cart with him whenever we get on the cart. And uh, he brings you forward. And as soon as he shows up to the cart stand, it's quite different than the experiences that y'all have had. Immediate carts are cleared out for him as he has brought priority fast pass to the front of the line. <laughs> and uh, he just kind of shrugs off the guy because he doesn't pay anything. And he says in Dwarvish... Yes, yeah, so they're all with me. Get them over here. We're going to Tornin. Is my cart ready? Um. Oh, interesting. And he looks at the carts being affixed, getting ready for y'all, and then he turns to you as and says, wait a second, you're the one... You're the reason we're building the big cart. <laughs> well, obviously... <laughs> I just lifted up your whole clan. They didn't tell us who was it before. They just told us to build what we're calling it Big Bertha. Big Bertha? Big Bertha. Well, it's the biggest it done? cart we've ever built. I mean, no, God it was... forbid, it's, nobody gets anything done quickly around here. And he raises his hand and says, this is actually a very good point. I will go back to the clan house right now. No. And no. oversee it. You will get in the cart. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not more important than this particular meeting. <laughs> Immediately after the meeting, you go talk to your clan about that. In fact, we expect you to. I'm going to raise his eyes. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's, to Tornin, just, we're going. And, I just uh, like it to be noted that Jar mm -hmm. Jaryu um, has not only the flagon of ale still from the clan house, mm -hmm. but he grabbed a second flagon of ale on the way out, and he is now walking <laughs> to the <distinct>. cart. <laughs> and both of these what? flagons are, like, encrusted with, like, the ox plan uh, symbol. Like, they're very obviously not taken, but, um, but you don't care. And you bring them onto the cart, and he kind of sees them, and he eyes them for a second. He says, I should probably bring those back, but I'm guessing that we'll have to wait until after two when he slides into the cart and Yokizos, you slide in right next to him. <laughs> yes, yeah, so he kind of sits there. To just go back immediately and bring the flagons back. And as soon as everyone is situated, the uh, carts get going and y'all take the wild ride across the city to Tornin, which takes a good uh, probably like 30 to 45 minutes. It's all the way on the other side. Is there anything that anyone would like to say while y'all are cart riding? What what time is it? I forgot if we were doing like afternoon time or are you or what? Oh, that's a different one. Um, what time did y'all scheduled for? I thought it was lunch. It was, this is afternoon, afternoon tea. tea. Afternoon tea. Afternoon, afternoon tea. tea. Yes. So it's like two two thirty. Oh, and nothing. jar you that deck save is that for your beer? Yeah, to see. <laughs> <laughs> so, who, who is sitting next to you? I don't, I don't know. Some rando, maybe? <laughs> oh, no, nice. it's just y'all. It's just y'all. I oh, need... It's just, oh, uh, roll a D8. Uh, um, I'm yeah. going to roll a D8. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Who's on the cart with us? Aslos, Jin... Aslos has his own cart. So so between... I am sitting uncomfortably oh, in my seat. In okay, the it's, yeah. a, it's a 1D4. It's between Ventus, Thunder, Jin, a... and yourself. Okay. So I, do four. I, I picture myself next to him just because like he defended oh, oh, me sorry. with a good berry. 
Oh, okay. Thunder, thunder, uh, slid in next to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you're holding both your beers, just waiting, and the cart kind of gets going. And after maybe like five to six seconds of it, like trying to rumble forward, it's starting to shake a lot, and they take one wild turn, and your beers go everywhere. <laughs> and you pour them all over your lap, all over Thunder's lap. It's all like kind of sticky now. It smells just like beer. Oh, yeah. It's like two whole, like, it's like two liters of beer that is just immediately spilled. Yeah. I <laughs> assume some kind of went like back my way, and I just have my mouth open, like <laughs> trying it's to a, catch it. Yeah, and you get quite a bit because it's an absolute mess. And like within the first ten seconds of the ride, I just thunderface, yeah. and I, I will at... never sit next to Jar you. <laughs> I look at thunder, and I just give him like a whoops. I give him a thunderface. <laughs> you're, you're kind of, <laughs> still holding the two empty flags. Like, yeah. <laughs> we, we do the double thunder face. I love it. A rare double thunder face. And the two of you have to sit with wet clothes for like the next 45 minutes on this train ride as you yeah. continue that forward. That exactly is the simulations. <laughs> it's just like the simulations. <laughs> and uh, yeah, after about 40 minutes, the group of you arrive. In Tornan. Tornan is a special neighborhood. Um, it's beautiful. I'm going to find some pictures that I made for it. Tornan, um, and I, I want to start doing this to give credit to those who did them. But uh, Tornan was the responsibility of Lyle to come up with. So Ooh. everything here in Tornan is his creation. Um Hello. And as you enter Tornan, you can see that it's a rather um, district, probably one of the smallest. And it's very similar to um, to Morkath in that re in that way. It's, it, but it's like the uh, the opposite of Morkash, where Morkash is small and it feels constricted and dark and clammy, a little wet. You feel unwelcome at all times. More, Tornin is beautifully tall. It is like a column of rock that has been carved out, and it makes the, face, the space feel so much larger than it actually is. It is bright and warm, and everyone here is very finely dressed. It is by far the richest um, district of Von Rieck, and it's set aside to be its own little um, wealthy oasis. It's like those micro countries that have the highest GDP in Europe, and there's like twenty thousand people there. Um, and the most. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I say to Undar, and as we approach, I'm like, "Why didn't you tell us that this was like a fancy place?" And uh, he he kind of shrugs. And uh, the most beautiful feature of Tornin is a towering, um, expansively built hotel of sorts it's like a hotel spa and it has large waterfalls cascading over its sides and um, it's covered in plants and ivy and for the hotel i actually have a uh, a picture for you um it is luxury upon luxury on the other side of the town is an extremely large um department store that has been built up and it has the same grandeur and um, wealth as the hotel. Imagine like a Neiman Marcus next to like a Grand Hilton. It, uh, this whole area just exudes wealth. And the group of you get off the cart and Undarn begins to walk towards the hotel and says, if I had to guess, it's here in Mountain Soul. And he brings you inside. The lobby of this hotel is just as exquisite and fine as the exterior. Marbled floors, cascading waterfall fountains, long ivies that, dra that drape over the sides. It is kind of like an open air hotel so you can get like the warmness and the mineral smells of, um, of the walls of Tornin, but still the sanctuary of the hotel. And he walks up to the receptionist, who gives him a warm smile, and he says in Dwarvish, 
Will you please tell us where Svensk is staying of the Boar clan? We need to speak with him. And you can tell by his tone that he is so over this. He does not want to participate. And the receptionist smiles and gestures him forward. And he says, come with me. And he brings you all forward. And he brings you up to a door and says, Svensk is through here. And he says, well, at this point, I'm coming, so I'm walking in. And he opens the door and is kind of still muttering a breath as the group of you enter. And the group of you enter <laughs> probably not what you were expecting. It's a large marbled room with wide, tall windows looking out on the heights of Tornin. It is a breathtaking view. And in the center of the room, carved out of the marble, is perhaps a three to four foot deep pool with steaming water coming out of it it is a giant hot tub and you can tell that this whole room has been fixated as a spa as the group of you walk in there is um really beautiful like classical music playing from a pianist that's sitting on the other side of the room who is live playing live piano for you, for all of you and sitting in the hot tub in the jacuzzi with cucumbers over his eyes and a warm towel over his forehead is who you presume to be the boar clan leader Spensk. and when the door opens he kind of mutters out just in your general direction he has long red hair and a long red beard that is striking for dwarven kind with bright green eyes. And he kind of calls out to the door and says, You can just leave it next to me, thank you. So yeah, as when he says that, I like saunter into the room and I loudly like pull a chair with scraping across like I presume a wood or stone floor making a loud noise. And I mm -hmm. sit down like right behind him. And I'm like, Hey and, Svensk And when you do that, when you begin to drag it, he kinda of turns his head the cucumber stuff. And he pulls one off and looks out on it. And then when he sees you, he takes the other cucumber off and the towel off. And uh, you can see that he is completely naked. Uh, and he kind of begins to reach for a towel and then gives up and says, Oh, well, hello there to everyone. And he kind of glances at the room and sees the whole Diamond Dragons and Undarn. He kind of raises a hand and smiles. He said he was in like a hot tub? Yeah, it's like a giant hot tub. Yeah, I get in there. Yeah, you slide on in. And it feels amazing, Thunder. Okay, it's like warm know. mineral water, clear as day. You can see the steam rising up. And as you slide in, he's kind of just 12 and he says, Please, feel, you're welcome to join if you would like. Hell yeah, I get in the hot water. And yeah, Yokizo's for you. This is, uh, this is the peak. This is as good as <laughs> this is probably the best you've ever had it. You, you, I, I don't know if you've ever experienced anything better than this. Nope, just You're, warm swamp water. Yeah, this is that on like steroids as you slide in and you just feel your body decompress. Are there are there any servants in the room? There's just the pianist, and there's a <laughs> small bell next to uh next to Spence. All yes. right, I. I strip down to my skivvies, my beer-soaked clothes. Yep. I just strip out of them, and I ring the bell. And as you turn away from the bell, the door opens. I just, and a dwarf in a nicely kind of loose tuxedo walks in and says, Yes, sir, how may I help you? I just, like, hand them to him, just balled up. And I say, wash these. Put it on Sphinx tab. Uh, how many and then tables, I like I plot how, myself in the tub. Yeah, how much like <laughs> space is there? Imagine about like a small swimming pool, but it's a hot tub. Okay, then we I do the exact do same. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm like so gracious of you to host our meeting with the Boar Clan in these luxurious uh, establishments. Ah, uh, yes, I beckon to is... Undarn. Undarn. Yeah, I was just about to ask. Is Undarn helping in? 
I'm still wearing my fine clothes, and I just like, and I completely ignore the fact that I'm wearing fine clothes, and I kind of like rip them a, l a little bit at my neck, mm -hmm. and then just get into the hot tub, like wearing the fine <laughs> clothes, so that I'm just like, oh, 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 well, well, now, so. <laughs> and uh, Ventus, do you get in as well? I do get in. I start like bird bathing myself. Yeah, and for you, Ventus, it's a little warm for your taste. You kind of prefer like clean, cold water, but it's still very nice. Yes, um, it feels wonderful on your feathers. And when you turn to Undar and to invite him naked, as he is pulling down his boxers to get in with all of you, and he slides in, he kind of opens his arms wide and says, "Oh, now this, this is very good. This is, this is very nice, Sven." I I reach back and I grab the bell and I ring it. And immediately the door opens. Yeah, so how may I help you? Can we have your finest whiskey and glasses for all of us, please? Oh, yes. Very good taste. I will return shortly. And he re-exits the room. <laughs> and Svensk at first looked quite uncomfortable with all of this. But you can see at this point he is now putting the cucumbers back on his eyes. <laughs> and he's kind of shrugged and he says, That's a very, very nice way to celebrate your... Homecoming to Von Rieg. How have you enjoyed the city so far? And he kind of slinks a little bit back into the water. Yeah, I slink in too, and I'm like, oh, the city's been pretty good. This is the best part, though. Ah, I'm very honored to capture that title. I'm sure there's been stiff competition. Speaking of stiff competition, segue into why we're here. It's not to relax in a spa with you, Svensk. And uh, he takes a cucumber off and he says, Oh? And he takes the other one off and lays him down. He says, I, uh, my apologies for both my absence at the Ox Clan house and for you not capturing my full attention since you've been here. That was very, very rude of me. And you now have my full attention. Are you? You rolled a sleight of hand check. Yeah, I wanted to try to sneakily grab the cucumbers and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I will roll a perception check. For I'm you. very hungry. <laughs> you can just ring the bell, Jar. You. <laughs> you know, I was thinking of doing the same thing. <laughs> I was like, he's a big, oh. he's a big fool. Uh, he definitely sees you, but he's not going to stop you, Jar. You. <laughs> he probably thinks it's weird. I eat the cucumbers. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he probably knows who I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And as you eat them, he says, A fine snack for a Worm Clan member, I'm sure. Yeah, more than I've had in days. <laughs> You'll keep those chuckles a little bit. <laughs> he, kind of, he, kind of, he kind of laughs slyly and says, But yes, you have my full attention now. Business, of course. Yeah, well, we have a couple of items of business. And the first one involves both of you. And that's why we wanted to have this meeting in the first place. Is obviously about the war effort. I'm sure you're well aware of it. Undarn literally has already helped in it. So, And I think that we all should give a small clap to Undarn and his nobleness. And he raises a hand and goes, clap, clap. And I clap and, too. And Undarn kind of gives a bow and says, I know my entire clan, Undarn, is very, very... Admirable of you. You know, Yokizos, before you arrived, we, our three clans, the stag and the boar and the ox, our alliance, we discussed you. We mulled over after receiving the letter from the dwarf in the town that you had visited, that was ox clan. And we prepared a brave protest in the council chambers. I'm sure you remember, yes? Do I remember a protest? Or do I, they just decide, they just said they want to help? Yeah, the, the protest meaning that they uh, they basically voted to help. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I definitely remember the pact and the alliance you had and that you were willing to help. And we're grateful for that, and I'm just wanting to double down that if, you know, things come to 
the vote that we're still going to have your vote in favor of our effort. And uh, Spence kind of runs his hand through his red beard and says, Could I ask for something? That Is it to be the going rate right? about the meteor? And when you say that, he, for the first time in, in this conversation, genuinely looks a little confused. He kind of cocks his head and he says, Meteor? That was item number two. What are you asking for? Oh, um, no, for my clan, what would be really, really nice, we have been really wanting to, well, it's twofold. We want to blast open a, a crevice really bad for the Orin side, but to do so, we have to have an 8-2 majority in the council chambers to use what we call the, uh, we call it the blaster, but it's essentially a giant, uh, it's like a big dynamite cannon, kind of. But we have to have authority to be able to use it, and we really want to use it to open up this tunnel. But there are a couple clans that don't want us to use it, so if you could like talk them into it, that would be nice. Why don't they want to use it? I mean, as far as I remember, you guys used it pretty commonly. Yes, it's not uh, not impossible to get to get votes. This particular cavern that we want to access, well, there are a couple reasons. The goat clan says no because they are fearful of the environmental impact. And he kind of looks at Undarn and they begin to laugh. Yeah, I'd chuckle with them. <laughs> and then the raven clan is voting no. Because they are afraid that it's too close to the Underdark. That is a valid point, though. Are you not concerned about that? And he kind of shrugs and says, We just want the rocks inside. It's not as though we're blasting into the Underdark. They just think it's too close. We've, for a long time, the Boar Clan, us, have signed several treatises. Which I am in favor of, by the way. I'm not trying to throw out the entire bathwater. But we are not allowed to encroach so close to the perceived uh, area of the Underdark. We have to keep a wide berth from it. Which is fine. There's plenty of rock. But this just barely crosses that threshold. So I think it's a bit of an overreaction. Personally. Why, why, why have you never struck a deal with the Worm Clan to uh, act as guides if you were to penetrate into the Underdark. And he kind of raises an eyebrow and says, well, if we were ever allowed to penetrate into the Underdark, I would certainly come to the Warren clan for that. There's no other clan that knows as much about the Underdark as you, huh? Yes. Is there not a... certainly, certainly you've blasted the Underdark before on accident. On accident. That's why the treatises were mated. We have to have more... What's the word that they used? Um, Tact? Oversight. They've applied a lot of regulations to us, which I am not in favor of, but I get it. Future of the whole dwarven city. Terrors of the Underdark spilling out because we blasted a hole too close to it. I understand, but there's also some really good shit in this hole, so... Have you drafted up like a safety plan or anything to help protect the side of the wall that would possibly be encroaching on that area? Do you need the blaster to open it? Can you do it in a magical way? <laughs> mm. No, we really need the blaster, to be honest. Um, I mean, we could do it by hand, I suppose, but we're going from a two-day job to a two-year job. Like, if I could just use the blaster, that would definitely be preferable. Is there not a smaller version of dynamite that you could use that wouldn't be as encroach as uh, damaging as the, the giant one Whatever the hell well called. the problem is the the blaster for the cavern we're trying to access is okay that one is okay it's once we're inside of that cavern they're afraid that that cavern is too close to the underdark how do they know well, the Raven Clan goes off of uh, 
science or something, some kind of research, they have formed a small, not an, an agreement that this is going too far with the wolf clan. So now we have the goat clan, the raven and wolf clan. That's three. We need two. We can have two no's, but not three no's. Okay. So Why not? You want us to help you figure that out. And... That'd be nice. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll at least try. <laughs> Can't guarantee that, obviously. We don't necessarily have a lot of pull because we're still new here. So. Hey, listen, I was just saying what I would like. But beyond the wolf, not sorry, wolf, well, wolf and bear, lamb and horse. And he kind of nudges over to Undarn. Us two are very close. I trust Undarn full heartedly. And if he is willing to go to war for you, then so am I. And then I turn to Undarn and I say, Undarn, do you expect something in return or are you already set to support us? And Undarn splashes water in his face and kind of waters it off and he says, You did something for my clan and expected nothing in return. I think it only fair that I do something for your clan and expect nothing in return. Well, we will return what we can in favors. But I do appreciate that we can count on your vote. Of course. So now moving on to item two, and I look at Jin. I look back. <laughs> <laughs> and Spencer's for both of you. <laughs> Would you like to explain it to him? Which part exactly? Oh, the, 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 me the meteor. meteor. Yeah, I lean over and I'm like, the meteor thing with the wolf clan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've heard some rumors of some kind of rock falling from the sky. And the wolf clan wants us to go retrieve it for them. So we were thinking, you know, you guys might know something about this. And then what if we, you know, help you guys make it look like y'all give it to the wolf clan. And while this is happening, the attendant, the servant has come back in and is drawing you all a small glass of their finest whiskey. And he's kind of talking about it as he's pouring it. Where it was aged, all this kind of stuff, the barrels it was in, and then he leaves you be. And he takes the small glass, but he is looking at you uh, sternly, Jen, as he raises the glass to his lips and says, The meteorite? You want us to extract the meteorite? No, no, no. We just would like your aid in extracting it. You know, any knowledge or expertise you could provide. And he looks at you and then looks at Undarn. And then looks back at you and says, I'm sorry. I, I'm confused. Uh, we were told, the Boar Clan, myself, to... We were forbid to approach the meteorite. Because it was in the Underdark, right? Of course, yes. But not only were we forbid, we were... Uh, what is the word in common? Preemptively? Uh, we did not bring this up, the meteorite. I have no interest in meteorite. It's difficult and heavy. Sometimes dangerous. I didn't want anything to do with it but a council motion was brought forward that forbid us from even approaching it which i and undarn remembers i lambasted them for it saying that i don't i don't care about it i don't want it and so i look what? at jane and out loud say so brook deer lied to us interesting yeah it sounds like he did and how did he know about it well, if it was brought before the whole council... Oh, okay. The council Sorry, I missed that part. Jari's been drinking. 
<laughs> and uh, but when you say that, he says. I mean, I should be clear, yes, it was brought before the whole council, but a clan elder brings it to the council to be discussed. No, 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 he specifically said that he contracted you guys, or tried to contract you guys to go get it, and that you wouldn't do it, and so we were supposed to go get it instead. And Undorn and Spence kind of exchange glances with each other, and Undorn kind of coughs, at the uh, at the whiskey, and says, "I think for right now, perhaps we be wise, and do not let Brugdeer know that we know he's lied to you." Of course, yeah, of who course brought, not. Who brought the meteor before the council? And Spence kind of smiles as he takes his shot of whiskey and says, "Well, Brugdeer, of course." Obviously. So do you what? know where it's at? Do you actually know where this meteorite's at? I have a fair idea. We could, uh, we're able to detect it. It, um, it has a very different electromagnetic reading than the other ores. So it, it's, it's quite easy to locate. The, the difficult part is accessing it. Can you provide us a map with what you know? And what makes it so difficult to access? And he's kind of putting his glass down as you ask this, and he says, of course we could provide a map. Beyond the, the Worm Clan, and he kind of gives you a nod, beyond Tuundith, we have the best maps that go beneath the city. But only the Worm Clan has the best maps for underneath, underneath the city. And that's why it's so difficult to access it's out of our domain. It's in the Underdark. Okay, so can we get safe passage through your domain to gain access to the underneath, underneath the city? Yes, yes. I, I can certainly allow you down there. Um, it's quite dangerous in the Underdark. And he kind of begins to talk, and, he, and then he kind of begins to smile and says... Who am I talking to? Of course you know it's dangerous in the Underdark. And you have the leader of Tuundeth. I mean, you couldn't be set up better. I was about to say, we literally walked, me and Jaryu literally walked here through the Underdark. <laughs> and when you say that, Yokizos, I want both you and Jaryu to roll insight checks. You're going to keep hearing the term uh, Underdark, and it mm -hmm. makes me think of the, the missing book. So like as I'm in the hot tub and I'm like look I look behind my shoulder and I'm just like subterraria to see if anyone any of them react to sure. see if they might know about the book. and and um I will also allow everyone else to roll perception check and um jar you both you and Yokizos kind of look at each other after you say that Yokizos like you jokingly said when we both got into Von Reek together um. But then you kind of repeat it and you look at each other. And you remember a detail that I described to you as you came into Von Reek. At the time, it probably didn't mean anything to you. But now, now it does. Do you remember? I'll let you try to put it together first before I just outright tell you. You rode in after finding a group of miners. Remember? Mm -hmm. And you rode in on a minecart with... A bunch of miners. Do you happen to remember the clan that I described them being a part of? Well, they would have been the Boar clan, right? Yeah, I don't remember, but I would assume Boar. Yeah. That's okay that you don't remember. I know a lot of time has passed. That's. But you would have thought that. But I explicitly described them oh. as having the colors of the Wolf clan. I look at Yokizos. Yeah. And as the two of you are looking My at each other... <laughs> in contemplation. And as the two of you look at each other and are thinking, you hear, you hear thunder go, Subterraria? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ventus, you hear it as well. <laughs> I feel like I'm really good at investigating. 
<laughs> investigation work. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're very proud of yourself, Thunder. You're like, oh my god, I connected the dots. <laughs> and then, so after that realization, I... can't go immediately we have other shit to do but do they react uh undar and uh are you saying so that's that's area yeah um well i i was under the impression that and correct me if i was under the impression that you were kind of trying to whisper say that to your group, not necessarily to everyone in the room no i, I want it very just faint to where like Yes, to my boys, but like also just barely high enough for like them to possibly it's hear when it. The whole okay. room goes then. quiet. It's in contemplation for a second, and then it's like it's like a si it's like a silent passing of gas. Uh, <laughs> gross. Uh, yeah, they do hear, and Svens kind of turns his head to you, Thunder, and says, "What did you say?" Excuse me. I, excuse me. I, I I thought I heard something. But that is my mistake. It's a song coming to America. What the hell is Subterraria? <laughs> what? <laughs> Never heard of it. And then I su submit my head under the water. <laughs> like I sink in. <laughs> <laughs> and you dunk yourself. <laughs> and Spence and Undorn ah! kind of look at each other. Uh, it feels really nice, Thunder. It feels so warm under your ears and your fur. It's very nice. Also, I don't know if you saw my sleight of handshake that I rolled after I did not. Uh, Jar You. So I'm not familiar with like edibles, uh, fruits, vegetables on the face. So when Jar You went for the cucumber, I went to replace the cucumber with a good berry for him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay. As Jar You, as you and you know, kind of reflecting together, um, Spence notices the good berry that's cut in half. And he kind of raises and he says, what is this for? And then I, I say good berry, but I'm under the water already. So it's just bubbles coming up. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a bite of it and he's kind of nibbling on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sink down into the water up to like, like where the water's <laughs> above, above my my uh, your nostrils and I'm just kind of yeah and I'm like thinking hard like I'm like trying to think but like having the heat surround me so it's like a mm. yeah it's very nice isn't it well now that we're all friends Sven I gotta ask what the fuck man <laughs> and uh, he's kind of eating on the good berry and says he kind of shrugs his shoulder he says I grow tired of the politics of Von Rieg. I set this appointment many weeks ago, and I realized this morning. And truthfully, I didn't think that this would be very enjoyable or important. Um, but you've proved me wrong on both accounts. This, uh, you all are quite lovely, and this actually seems quite important. So, I am double wrong. And he takes a bite of the good berry. Well, we appreciate you saying that. I kind of like look over like and kind of ignoring the politics of it all I'm like so how do I get a room here and he kind of laughs and he says well uh, it will cost you quite a bit the mountain soul is a uh, it's a resort for the tired and the weary miners at least that's how it started it was a rest stop for the miners of the boar clan on their way home so that they didn't have to go all the way into the city but instead could stop here and then continue onwards to the mines but as demand grew and Tornan became a little more uh, nice so did Mountain Soul and here we are at a five-star resort well how, how much a night hmm I believe the cheapest room is 200 gold a night we used to be able to afford that. <laughs> what? what if we gave up our boat. our yeah. house? Dude, wait, what if we go stay on the boat? Ooh, true. 
I kind of just sink. I what sink deep in? into the water. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we have three people that have sunk into the water. <laughs> so uh, how? So it's me, Ventus, Sven that are not submerged, and Undarn. Yes. <laughs> I look. I just like look at all three of them, kind of awkward, and then I just like slowly sink my head in the water. <laughs> And you can see that Spinsk and uh, Undarn are now kind of beginning to exchange glances at, like, this is like... And uh, Spinsk turns to you, Jaryu, and says, So, Jaryu, how is the clan house uh, repairs going? Poorly. I've been gone for five years, and uh, it looks the same, Spinsk. That is uh, most unfortunate. I... I've heard word that many of the two and members have fled the city. Yes, two of two of the other three founding members are gone. Hmm. Um, what's left in the city, Sven Sky will not disclose. But uh, <laughs> now that I'm back in the city, I would love to take advantage of these possible business opportunities to help my clan and yours. Well, what did you have in mind? Well. For one, we can provide a solution to the surveying of the Underdark portion in that tunnel that you want to blast. We could also provide you regular and routine updates on uh, Underdark areas that you might be interested in exploring. There's lots of potential here, Svensk. <laughs> and he goes for the other good berry as he's beginning to eat. And you can see his eyes, they don't glaze up. You can tell that this, this has transformed into a business conversation. And he has no one else to escape to. Everyone else has sunk under the water. <laughs> and so he kind of looks and uh, looks at Undarn, who kind of begins to sink under. And he kind of like looks back and he's like... Undarn no, is <laughs> you, Yeah. <laughs> you raise a good point. I am... Would be particularly interested in the chartering of the Underdark so that we might avoid Underdark areas in the future. Um, I think that you make good sense. It's just a factor of finding a price that is agreeable for both of us. Well, we're very modest in our pricing. Perhaps we can schedule a meeting of clans. Me, you, several of your members, a few of mine, and see see what your maps look like. I think that would be agreeable. And even chartering a trip down, if it's for the purpose of exploration, we don't even need the council's approval. Wink. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> you say that? Just say it. I love it. You, you get a little bit of interest actually. She's kind of like, no council approval. I mean, we're a minor clan. We don't typically need to operate under the council approval. That's very true, actually. I do like the sound of that. Anything to avoid red tape, especially if it has to do not just the Underdark, but the Underground. Let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's schedule something. I think that there might be something here for us. Me too. And then I slowly slide underwater. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of raises his hands and he like looks around. Oh uh, yeah, I love it. I fucking love it. Yeah, I swear, point... everyone while we're all underwater, just to see who's like holding their breath the longest. Bro, this cracks me up. It's like because Thunder fucking walked out of the original meeting that we had at that clubhouse, and everyone walked out, and now it's like I'm underwater. Everyone's still getting underwater. <laughs> and at some point, I kind of just like burst out of the pool, and then I like it, forgetting I'm in a meeting. I kind of like go out to a window, and I want to call Raiden. <laughs> and yeah, like any fine room in Von Rieg, there's a a Raven hold, and um, and you summon a Raven, and there. I want to actually go back to Derna. I'm going to try this track called Dwarven Mines Epic. No, that's too epic. Sorry, Derna. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> it was kind of cool. But, uh, I mean, no, it's very cool. It's too cool for you. Um, you find yourself <laughs> at the entrance to the chasm, Derna. What mm -hmm. do you do? 
Yeah, so he's been sitting there for a good minute, invisible as hell, watching things, thinking about it, looking around the sides. Um, uh, with dark vision, looking on the sides, he can see that there's a structure that's, you know, creating this conveyor belt, right? Like, yeah, mounted to the side. So he's kind of taking a look at him that, that, seeing if uh, there's some places of purchase. Um, and he'll pull out a. Uh, he'll all, while he's doing that, he's fumbling around with some pebbles uh, and getting his getting his trusty pebbles out. Sure. Yeah, and you can see that there there are. I mean, there's equipment, right? Um, there's hardware fixed into the side of this. So like, if there is a way down using it, but it wouldn't be like it's not like a stair or like a ladder. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like the scaffolding of. Yeah. It's difficult. The thing itself. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, he's thought about it for a little bit. He pulls out some of the stones and he grabs uh, his nice green pebble that he likes. Uh, and he'll he'll drop it as he casts uh, Locate Object. Interesting. And he's going to track it uh, as it goes down. Yeah. You watch as the pebble just kind of flashes a brilliant blue. Just for a second as it returns to being a normal pebble for you. And you drop it, and it drops into the darkness. But as soon as it hits the darkness, you get like almost like a sonar reading of this pebble as you continue to locate it. And you watch it drop about two to three hundred feet downwards, a long ways. And then it rests. Uh, and it does rest? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I want for you, Derna, to actually roll for me, kind of while you're looking around, roll for me an investigation check. Oof. Very nice. You find, while you're looking around at things, trying to find grippage a way down, you find three large, brown, kind of tawny, golden eagle feathers. Oh. Uh. Okay. Well then, yeah, I feel like he would. Uh, mm, oh, I don't have that. I, thought I had that. Yeah, no, I do. I guess. I guess he would take a look at him. Uh, and do identify real quick. Uh, well, first, I, can you just do an Arcana check? I guess to see if it's magic. I mean, I. <laughs> 18. Yeah, not magic in the way of like spellcraft. Mm. Yeah, screw it. He'll he'll still identify it just to make sure there's something he doesn't know about about this thing. I mean, it has to be ma it's, it is magic item or some other magic imbued object. You learn his properties. So with the 18, would he know? that his identify would work or not? I think that you would know that your identify would not work. So you can have that one back. Okay. Awesome. Appreciate it. Mm. But that tells you something. That these feathers are at least somewhat natural. Um, but Derna, as world travel, as worldly as he is, I mean, you would look around this cavern and know that there are no eagles down here. Yeah. He's just going to take that on board <laughs> and, like, <laughs> not really know what to do with that. But he's going to tuck that in there and keep that, like, some good knowledge. Uh, he wants to... I, th I think this will work. Uh, because of the uh, locate object, I want to... I want to cast clairvoyance down about 300 mm. foot down about where I think that is sure uh, where the pebble is and I'll use sight not sound yeah and what you see down here is you can see where the conveyor belt actually hits the ground and it connects to a mining conveyor that you can see dwarves have placed what they have mined onto this conveyor belt as it slowly rocks forward, bringing it up to the lift, 
to where you are and then forward once again. Um, you can see that it brings you down to the bottom of this tunnel. And then there's another tunnel that proceeds deeper in, but flat this time. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay. Looking around for people. Is there anybody out and about in this area? No people. Okay. So he'll take... Uh, he's still got his pebbles in his hands, and he takes out a, uh, a red one and kind of puts it uh, to the side up there on the top where he's at. Kind of let it, let it hang out there. Uh, and then he's going to dimension door straight down there. Hell yeah. What does it look like? Uh, yeah, yeah, I get enveloped. I start whistling in a frequency that kind of starts wavering. And as this gold light comes off of me, I start to waver as well and pop. Uh, and it's like a burst of gold as I pop into the uh, bottom. Nice. And yeah, you're kind of at the bottom of this. You can kind of see I drew it for you, right? This is kind of what it looks like. Um, you're at the bottom of this switchback. It's kind of like pipe looking thing. And um, you continue forward deeper into the darkness. And after about maybe 50 yards or so of walking, you come across noises. And you recognize these noises. They're, it's dwarves speaking dwarvish and they're in a small shelter that has been built kind of almost like a lean to um that has a closed door in it up against the shaft of the mine wall okay uh yeah he'll uh he'll rub his uh his ring and uh go invisible okay and then uh get up there and try to do uh of course uh player voice has dropped right and uh i'll walk to the i'll sneak up to the door and try to have a listen in yeah and it's just dwarves drinking talking um they're just kind of laughing shooting the shit um you can see through the the door that they are certainly miners of the boar clan um they have pickaxes out um you can see that they also have several um weapons including a firearm a large rifle is leaned up against the bookshelf and you can see that one of the dwarves is nursing a really nasty injury his arm is really bandaged up and in a sling it looks very fresh and you see that one of the other dwarves has his hand, has his leg propped up on the table also in wraps it seems as though these dwarves recently got in some kind of really bad encounter which explains to you, Derna, why there's no dwarves walking around here. Mm. Yeah, and I guess I would do some looking around real quick while, while I was doing that, uh, walking that way, uh, to see if there's any more shrooms of any kind, or dust of shrooms. Uh, roll an investigation check. Da, 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 da. Work hard, play hard. Investigation. Every now and then you find one, yes. Yeah. And it goes past their door and continues mm -hmm. on. Yeah, because I'll, I'll, I would do that. I would keep following it and go back to the door, listen in. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess he would... Uh, he's got this invisibility going. He would go... Uh, he would go trail down a little... Well... Yeah, he'd go trail down a little bit longer, see what he sees, and time it out for like 20 minutes. So he has 20 minutes to walk back, right, and still be invisible. Sure. Yeah, you uh, you kind of time it out a little bit. And each push that you make deeper in is just a little bit spookier. Not a whole lot, um, but it's only getting darker, and you're only getting farther from civilization. As yeah, you go deeper, to sweat. He yes. To sweat. He don't like this at all. He don't like the the cave system. Period. But let alone the underdark. Life. Yeah, and it's only getting colder on your skin. The air is getting a little more difficult to breathe, and you hear something in front of you that makes you pause. And slowly out from the darkness, you hear and you see. You hear the unmistakable sound of 
growling and snarling. And you see the two amber eyes of what appears to be a wolf. And it slowly pushes out from the darkness. And you can begin to see it. It's large. It's a dire wolf. Uh, and you can see that its its haunches are raised. The hair on its back is straight up. And it's, give, it's bearing its fangs at you. It's slowly pushing forward. Yeah, you... And it's coming forward on me and I'm invisible. Um... I look behind me. I, I can see behind me pretty good distance, right? Because this isn't just yeah. like a winding ass thing. Uh, we'll risk the biscuit and go on invisible and be uh, and just <laughs> and and uh, he'll say like uh, Grot. Okizo sent me. Are you Grot? Is this Grot? And uh, yes. As you reveal yourself, you can see the wolf pause as it looks at you. And as soon as you start talking, his snarling and his growling begins to stop. And emerging in front of you in one fluid motion, Wild Shapes of Fearbulg. Ah, yes. I thought I was going to have to fight people. Ugh. And... When he sees you, he speaks to you in kind of a low, um, unexcited voice. And he says to you, You said Yokizos sent you. Yes, Grot. They are and looking for you. I can take you to him. He kind of squints at you. And who are you? Uh, during a gold leaf, and I do a little bow, smiling ass redhead, and, uh, yes, I'm a private investigator. I was been hired to find you. Are you okay? Do you need any type of healing? I need no help. No healing. Okay, awesome. Well, would you like to, uh, head back up, and, uh, I can take you right to Yokizos. Uh, it might be a little late getting in, but we can go. And he kind of watches you for a second, emotionless. And he's still leaving us and on. He says, yes, we should go. Yeah, and I will just start leading him back. No precautions uh, other than a couple things I got planned. But yeah. Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't want to. I don't want to throw spells on top of him and make us invisible or anything. Just me and him walking that way. And as you kind of take him in for the first time, Derna, you can see that the remnants of what he was are ripped and shredded in places. He is exceptionally dirty and um, tall, of course, but he seems to be kind of in poor condition. Maybe not health, but he has seen better days. Yeah. And I was going to say, with that, I was going to go to the other side. Boom. Love it. And for the rest of you, you are back in a very different place than, uh, than Dern is in. You are in the, the mountain soul, soul spa and resort. Azos, you wanted to write a letter. A raven comes down. Three, actually. Three letters. A raven comes down to you, <laughs> anticipating your parchment. Yeah, so the first one, and I mean, the first two are going to be, well, okay, so the first and the third one are going to be in Dwarvish. So the first one I want to send to, and it's gonna, it's not going to be the best Dwarvish. The last one will be a lot better Dwarvish. So this is kind of like okay, what I've picked up a little bit. So I say... Mm -hmm. Ship progress question mark and then I will sign it as Los. I want to send that to Okay. My second one I want to send to um obviously 
to check on my flavor. So I'm going to say flavor update. <laughs> and, then I, and then I'm going to send it off. And then the third one, I want to say in Dwarvish, I know you are listening, but I want to let you know that I am a listener too. And I want to sign it AG and send it to the Raven clan leader. Oh, shit. Interesting. And I want to see what my reply is. Yeah, you uh, you send off the first two ravens pretty loosey-goosey. But on that third one, you tie that parchment especially tight. And you watch as the raven takes your letter and brings it out to the raven clan house. And then kind of just in dumb as low style, I kind of want to just, you know, um, act like, because, you know, I, I kind of fall to the line of like being dumb and being like whatever. So I kind of just hop back, hop back in the hot tub with the full uh -huh. clothes on. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you get back in, you make a big splash, and they all kind of look up at you as you splash back in. For the rest of you, I would imagine your heads have come up by now to take oxygen. Um, uh, I'm actually using shit water. water for hours, actually. So I, I was trying to be Yokuzos, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm secretly I using that, like, I shape water. Last, I like to think when Jaryu comes up, his hair is all wet, but like dirt just comes out of all of his hair and his beard. It's like whenever you bathe the dirty dog. Yeah. In our jacuzzi. Ew. Yeah, and then Spence kind of like looks at him he's like, uh, wow. I hop out oh. of the jacuzzi after I see that. Thunder, couldn't you just wild shape into like a fish? <laughs> so true. I don't, I don't uh, wild shape in front of strangers as a fish. It's too vulnerable. True. Oh, like, yeah, I just, like, really wanted to beat Yokizos. Flashback <laughs> to the Mulberry Manor. No, like, yeah, I, I'm actually he just... That, he died. He almost died, so... <laughs> I'm secretly just using shape water to create like an air bubble, so I'm just like actually have like an air bubble in my face, underwater. Oh dang! <laughs> it's cheating. And yeah, uh, which we can all see because there's literally oh, yeah. a bubble of water underneath. <laughs> Very uh -huh. obvious, but uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> as the two of you continue to compete, you can tell that Spence and uh, Undarn are getting a, a little not uncomfortable going on, and so Undarn tries to break the silence by saying. So, what, uh, who, what clans do you, are you still going to meet with, hmm? Um, I lean back and grab a piece of paper with some hastily scratched stuff on it. Speaking of, what <laughs> put, on, put on your glasses. The bear, it's probably like 3.30. Yeah, yeah, I put on some reading glasses and then... Don't the, we have some afternoon tea to the get The bear, to? the rat, no, this is afternoon tea. The bear, the rat, oh. and the goat are, ne are the next. We, we have the lynx dinner for dinner. Oh yeah, we have lynx dinner. So yeah, we gotta. Oh, sh we gotta go. Shit. Oh, and yeah, when you right say right. lynx, the two of them kind of look at each other, and he in says, "You're know, meeting with the lynx clan." He asked us to come see him and have dinner or something. So I don't know. Is that a bad thing? No, I'm just surprised. The lynx clan is very secretive. Very private. Oh, well, maybe that's what, a good what can you thing. tell us about them? And Spence even kind of shrugs and says, "Truthfully, not much. Um, we know that they used to be part of the Wolf Clan, of course, split away. Um, they still operate with the Wolf Clan, but have largely separated themselves in many ways." Um. They are not like the bear clan that still lives in the shadow of the wolf clan. They are a very separate entity. Yeah, I'm drying off. I'm starting to put on my robes. My also, dude, as... I'm doing the same. Thank you for, the, for meeting us here in this wonderful establishment, Svensk. I'm glad we and had a Svensk productive meeting. Spence gives a big smile and says, Don't forget the blaster. Yes, the blaster. David, as we're getting out, I'm using shape water because I could change the color of water. So mm -hmm. as we're getting out, I'm making it seem like they just pissed the fucking um, mm -hmm. hot tub. I'm changing the fucking water from underneath them to like slightly yellow 
and then making it come up to the surface. I... It's like clearly you're casting magic, right? Wait, which spell is it? Shape water. <laughs> Let me check really quickly to see if it has a vocal component. <laughs> it's only somatic, so it's your hands you. that, like, that do a hand movement. Exactly. Um, I'm, like I'm putting my back, hands my behind back, his back. Yeah, my, like, exactly. My back is facing the water. <laughs> and Spence sees it and kind of says, Oh, oh, this is any kind of... <laughs> Darn. God. No gonna... class. <laughs> oh. I say they, both, they both get out of the water disgusted. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I say, animals. <laughs> and I look at you, Kizos. I'm like, huh? 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 <laughs> Yeah, and then like I look at him knowingly, and then I look at all of the non-animals, and I'm like, disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm getting out, so any last-minute pointers on if we were to try to extract the meteorite? He kind of thinks, and he says, oh, you really wanted to extract it? We gotta get a vote. Oh, yeah. Uh, well... Be prepared to lift a lot. Be prepared for any dangers that might come your way. Um, you will need something adamantine to be able to cut it. Adamantium? A normal pickaxe will not work. Can you lend us one? You can't think for a second. I or think that this should, you, you will need to go to the clan house. Let them know that I sent you. And then, as far as the clans that we need to try to convince for your blaster, we only need to convince one of one more, right? And which which ones are opposed? Mm -hmm. Yes, the goat clan, the raven clan, and the wolf clan are all opposed. Hmm. Interesting. The wolf clan would be opposed. <coughs> <coughs> yes, oh, they yeah. last minute sided with the raven clan. They form a little not an alliance, but the raven. No, is being backed by the wolf. Mm, sounds like they don't want anybody near the Underdark. Yeah. Kind of wonder why. Myself as I <laughs> get out of the tub butt naked and um, <laughs> I ring the bell. And almost immediately the door opens. Yeah, that's how I'm going to help you. I snap my, snap my fingers. Ah, yes, of course. And he turns around and another servant hands him and says, we had to apply an extra fee because we had to use three extra servings of detergent to be able to get through the grime of these clothes. But I think you'll find that they are in nicer shape than you have seen in years. And he presents them all very nicely folded. They kind of have like a lavender scent to them. Yeah, and I just grab and hug them and sniff them. Yeah, they smell like lavender. And then I say, put it on Sphinx tab. Of course, sir. And Sphinx kind of gives a weak smile. <laughs> I'll, and the I'll, tip, group, I'll tip the guy ten gold. And he gives a deep bow and says, Thank you very kindly, sir. Ten gold. Yeah, dude, we're in a rich person establishment. Oh, we yeah, got 330 like, of it. Fuck it, take ten. That's like almost as much money as I have. <laughs> well, you're poor. That's, that's as much money as your clan house has. Yeah. <laughs> Combined. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. And, and that, uh, as I'm getting dressed, mm -hmm. I uh, I stand up real quick for a second, and I look over at Jaryu, and I'm like, "You smell nice, Jaryu. Much better than you have before." Oh. And then I turn around and walk out. <laughs> I kind of look at him, and I'm like, "You smell disgusting." <laughs> <laughs> Can't please everybody, Aslos. <laughs> and the group of you head out into this, the few streets of Tornin. It doesn't take you long to find a conductor that is willing to bring you where you need to go next. And he asks, so can where is it that you need to go? Yes, yes, Thunder. I want to say that, like, can I spot anything from Cole's window? Oh, yes, of course. You see uh, wanna... many fine things, mostly cloaks and robes that are on in the windows. I look at the group. I'm like, hey, can I really? Can I buy that fucking that green cloak real quick before we jump on the the cart? 
and you see thunder, kind of like a movie moment in the window, with the spotlight <laughs> shining down on it. The most Ooh. beautiful, the most beautiful, awe-inspiring cloak that you've ever seen. It's on a mannequin, and it drapes down into a beautiful green that kind of sparkles in the light, and you are absolutely transfixed. As you kind of like half look at it, and then like, <gasps> and then you see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm opening and shutting my hand. Like, I'm trying to, like, reach. I'm just like, can I? Guys, it's right there, please. And I'm right like, there. Which, which one do you want? It's nature's mantle. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. For some reason, I know what it's called. It's called yeah. nature's mantle. Do you, do you have the... Do you, do you get no, the I got it. That? Yeah, yeah. I just want to go in there really quick and just... In and out. In and out. Really quick. In and out. In and out. Go for okay. it. And as I'm asking, I'm, I'm just like quick. one step at a time. Okay. And then I fucking run in there and I buy it. <laughs> and as you walk in, you are greeted at the front. This is a very nice store. And so you're greeted at the front by a very well uh, dwarf that kind of walks forward to you and says, Hello, sir. Welcome to Cole. Love to help you if you did. And uh, as he's talking to me, I'm just looking at it. So I'm not really looking at him. But I'm just like, Yeah, I want that. <laughs> and he kind of turns to look at it and he says, Ah, a very fine cloak by the name of Nature's Mantle. Would you like to have it fit fitted for you, sir? Oh, I, is it too big already? Well, I don't know. You haven't tried it on. Okay, let's do that. And he takes it off the uh, mannequin, and you kind of put it on. And um, it, it fits pretty well. It's actually pretty good. And he kind of looks at it and judges the hem. Looks at the wrist, he says, We could make minor alterations if you would like, sir, for a perfect fit. Otherwise, I'd say it actually looks quite stylish on you. No, thank you. Okay, well, in that case, that'll be a thousand gold. Green is truly your color. Stop! <laughs> I give a thousand and one. <laughs> And he kind of gives you a little bow and says, thank you very much, sir. If you're ever interested again, please revisit Coles and we can finish the rest of your ensemble and get you looking very fine. When I, whenever it, we're all, because I'm assuming we're all kind of standing outside, like watching this, because we're all waiting for yeah. we can go. So I'm see, Jar, I see a thunder pull out this giant bundle of gold. And I look at Jar, and I'm like, you thought my 10 gold was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> look what you just and then I just... <laughs> I just know until run out of the store. <laughs> it's like still a... not as nice as my cloak, and I hold out my <laughs> like moth eaten with cape of the it. crawl. That's like yeah, just like ratty. And <laughs> Jar, you weren't you with us when we bought that boat? No, was I? Yeah, I could have sworn you. I'm were. pretty I sure you were. The sailors not. I thought I was outside. Uh, no, you, you silly have, you goober. Oh yeah, possible. I might have been looking for work. I don't remember. <laughs> And I'm, uh, like, super offended, kind of just looking at him like, really? <laughs> Did we ever figure out a name for it? <laughs> uh, conversation for another day. And then I go, really I go the and you're interrupted by Thunder, who comes out wearing a beautiful cloak. There's actually a picture for this cloak that I will show you so you know exactly what oh, yeah. it looks like. And then now I'm starting to spin in it. Like a fucking wow. big tornado. Yeah. Uh, and I say, it's ugly. And then I turn around and like walk really fast towards the cart. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you fucking liar. <laughs> Damn, Thunder looking sharp. Ooh. Yeah, I definitely, as I'm walking away, I definitely Damn. have a big smile on my face. Like, <laughs> I hope that God understands. I want to roll. I want to roll for that. <laughs> I look her cooler. Ooh. Did he mean that? Did he mean that? You, uh, at Seven. first it kind of hurts, but then you realize... Like, this is what it means to be part of a family. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Shit talking. Damn, I fucking cry. Oh, really? I fucking cry a little bit. <laughs> God damn it. And so the group of you see Thunder in his beautiful new cloak that's a little big for him. Tears are beginning to swell up in his eyes, but he's smiling. So happy. <laughs> so happy. I'm holding on to my fucking staff. Uh, he almost turned into a vampire. He almost got eaten by a... <laughs> the lovable boy wonder. I almost got killed uh, by a vampire. He almost got turned into it. a fish and stuck into one. and almost turned into a meal. And uh, the group of you walk up to the minecart operator. And you can see... 
One's well, you cut out two in Bog Greek. Oh. We, we heard we, you can see. You can see that this minecart operator, unlike many of the others that you've encountered in Von Rieg, is quite fancy. He has on a very nice uh, set of clothes, a finely waxed mustache, and he opens up one of the carts for you and says, So, where will you be traveling today? I will be going to the council district. Where the hell do you meet the high priest? The council district <laughs> eyebrows and says, The high priest, I have... You will want to go to the temple district. Yeah, take me to the temple district. They're going somewhere else. Oh, of course, yeah. Well, and he kind of pats the cart. Off you go. And then, Off you go. Tick, 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 and then begins to roll out. And then the next cart kind of comes in and he says, And for the rest of you, where will you be going? The Lynx Clan House. The Lynx Clan House. Mm. The prob prob the Hyatt District, of mm. course. Load on in, please. When I look again at them, my cart ready. <laughs> Who are you, sir? And then I I don't say anything, and I like awkwardly climb into my cart in the back and start scowling. <laughs> and I'm like constantly looking at the air, like to see if a raven's coming, because now I'm just annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just the, annoyed. The rest of you slip in well. Two, two, and one. And he kind of pats the cart and he says, Off you go. Enjoy the hat district. And the tracks begin to roll and you go over the edge. And die. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to finish the session with uh, with Adjourna and Grot. Since we don't really have time to start anything with y'all. We'll save it for next time. And, um, and we'll work with you too. So the two of you are exiting out of the chamber. And you reach the end of this tunnel where it goes upwards. Where you um, dimension door down, Derna. Mm -hmm. And Grot kind of looks up and he says, The last time I was here, I flew down. Can you fly? Ah, uh, no, Grot. I can't fly. That's not a thing. Uh, I can get up there, though. Uh, would you like me to... You Would Would you would like to try with the way I do it real quick? And he kind of shrugs. Awesome. Appreciate it. And I'll locate object real quick. I'll burn it again just to make sure I know where my little pebble up top is. And then I'll cast yep. Dimension Door again. Boom. Yeah. And, and you're, uh, on him. your yeah. system works flawlessly. As you return back to your red pebble, um, yeah, picking up exactly. picking up my pebbles for sure though. As I go, yes. I like those. I mean, they don't they're they're worthless, but I like them. They got nice color, easy to remember. Of course, yeah. And uh, Grot watches as the two of you come back up, and uh, he looks wholly unimpressed. And Derna, I think that at this point you would kind of begin to question why they wanted to save him so badly, uh, uh... as he is devoid of charisma as he just begins to walk forward without you <laughs> yeah uh yeah definitely thinking hard about uh i saw so, I, I probably started thinking about like uh ptsd almost like people getting really jacked up in war like something like maybe mm. he's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty jacked up and then i'm also thinking about the mushroom stuff but i don't bring the mushrooms up at all but i do make small talk and i try not to get really into the details about what he's been doing or anything more lighthearted stuff sure uh, like what what do you ask him uh yeah i mean uh, j just i mean fair bugs right i mean y'all y'all have like a good uh you know thirst for hung you know you have a hunger don't you you eat a lot or you've been getting plenty fed i got some good places up top he kind of looks down at you continuing to walk into this Yes, we are hungry people, which is why I wanted to come in the first place, because my clan is starving and dying of hunger. Yeah, he dirt was not expecting that. It's like, uh, <laughs> damn. Uh, well, that seems like a very noble cause. Uh. 
I mean, I was thinking about maybe taking you for uh, some chata or something, but, uh, mm, okay, yeah. Perhaps, see, that's the thing about what I've been traveling around. I, I've, I've got to know Yokizos and his crew a little bit, and I, 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 I'm assuming you know uh, Undith with him, Jaru, as well. Jaru? And when uh, you say this name, he uh, kind of lowers down at you and stops walking. For the first time, and maybe since y'all have reached this elevated uh, cavern, and says to you, who did you say? Uh, 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 <laughs> Jar you? Jar I believe. Yeah. Jaru. He kind of shakes his head. No, I do not know this person. Hmm. Uh. Do you, have you, and he begins do you to walk know? again. Yeah, I, I kind of wait. I don't. I want him to keep walking. I don't want to stop him again. But I, I'm too curious to help myself. Uh, and just ask him. Uh, so, uh, have you ever been to uh, Vong Rig up top before? And he turns and looks at you again and says, "Before when?" Well, I mean, just ever, I guess. Before I found you down here. Before I was here? Yes. Yes, I have been here with Yokizos. The lizard. Mm. Lizard. Do you know nothing of this, this Unduth? Do you know the Unduth people? Or, or you specifically? Uh, and he starts to look almost a little frustrated. He says, who are these people? That you say, are they human, dwarf? And he kind of begins to raise his voice just slightly. I no, don't no, know. No. I don't yeah. know who you're speaking of. No, no big deal. I, I thought you might have known him. He knows Yokizos, and I met him. Seems like an upright individual. Good guy. Uh, uh, have you ever heard of the Tales of Orcaria? I mean, have you seen it? Have you... You know about that? It's a big talk up town. Whole thing going on with a big war. I don't know them that well, but they seem very interested in this. And it, as you kind of continue to talk, he is saying nothing in return and says quietly, I think that we should find Yokizos. That sounds good, and I don't. I'm like contemplating detect mag or uh, detect thoughts on them, but I'm like, no, it's just been too much. It's like something's going on here. He's right. Safest bet is just to get him back to Yokizos and and then really start turning the screws on what's going on here. Uh, so I pretty much drop the investigation and I start talking lovingly about uh, Chata. And the Firefox and like this badass mm -hmm. bone marrow butter that they like to put on their steaks. Like it's it's heaven, like going to town. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he uh, nothing. Yeah, he says nothing to you in response. And you kind of fall back a little bit. And when you do so, you see him from behind. And he wears like a very simple kind of like leather shirt almost. Like it just kind of drapes over him. Not mm -hmm. fitted in any way. It's like a canvas almost. And from the back, you can see that going across the back, like a line diagonal to his back, the, the, the shirt is ripped. And there is a gruesome carve out of his back where the blood has dried and the skin is, um, is trying to heal. And with that observation, I want to end the session. No. <laughs> the Lynx oh, yeah. Clan. Fucking Grot's not going to barely remember Yokizos. He's going to be like, we just met. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> you got all time yeah. before you were gone. <laughs> Ugh, fucking mushrooms, man. Ugh, fuck. Very nice. Yeah, good job. Y'all are only getting deeper into the web. 
How many spells did I burn? One, two. Do you expect us to go to a spa, David? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not until Lau wrote it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I love this. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I love that too. It's I'm cool interested how, like, to hear my my uh, Raven reply, David. Yeah, Who no, I, you send him to? I like it. I sent one to the ice cream lady, or the yogurt. Yeah, I got, got the ice cream and the Raven. Wasn't there a third one? Yeah, the, the ship guy. Yeah. Oh yep. yeah, the ship. ice cream I want Raven. A ship update and then an ice cream update and then <laughs> I think Aslos has spent his time in the city and he thinks that the ravens are being tracked by the raven clan and he wants further information on it <laughs> yeah i was not expecting that i really like it i want it to seem with my character that i'm listening but i'm not listening i want everybody <laughs> in the city to think that I, like, I like oh he's think... the big dumb strong goliath yeah now, mm -hmm. now that Aslos has that tiara like we all know he can be smart but we don't know that he's like pretending to be dumb a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, it creates a, a hard, uh, it's hard to know when and when not. Yeah, I like it. We've always been assuming this tiara is slightly falling off, but it really hasn't. Been. <laughs> it's always been there, always on. <laughs> always. Watching. GG's, guys. Yeah, great always job, guys. Watch. I'm going to head out. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, David. Hey, thank you, guys. Thanks,